All right, Physics 12, uh, welcome back to our notes on uh, electric circuits. This is the fourth and final notes for this unit on something called electromotive force. So um, we know that batteries are sources of potential difference, which is also known as a voltage, and that basically this voltage provides electrical energy to the circuit. Now, um, even if the battery is not connected to anything, you're going to notice a potential difference between the terminals. The potential difference that you find when the batteries aren't connected to anything is called electromotive force. Electromotive force. And this is also known as EMF, which is just abbreviated as the Greek letter epsilon. So, despite its name, this is not actually a force, it's a potential. But, essentially, uh, before we really recognize the difference between the two, it was named, and sort of the name has stuck ever since. So, uh, just as an example, if you want to compare the EMFs of different battery types, if you think of a typical car battery, it's a lead-acid battery, and it would have an EMF of about 12 volts, whereas your normal run-of-the-mill alkaline battery has an EMF of about 1.5 volts. So, the thing we notice about um, batteries, and you should have noticed this last day when you did your lab, um, as soon as you plug the battery into something, into a circuit, into a light bulb or a resistor, and current starts to flow, when you measure the voltage that's actually coming out of the battery, or the potential difference across the terminals, it's always going to be less than the EMF. So the EMF is the, the ideal or maybe the maximum potential difference the battery can offer, and yet whenever we put it to work to actually do something, we get less than that voltage out of it. And this is due to the fact that built into every battery is a small amount of resistance. So we call this internal resistance. And basically, because of this internal resistance, the terminal voltage that you measure across your battery is always going to be less than the EMF of the battery when it's in use. So we call this internal resistance. <clears throat> and the terminal voltage is always less than the EMF once the battery is in use. So to calculate this value, we use the following formula. We say that V term, or terminal voltage, is equal to EMF minus I times R. And so just remember that this is the potential across the battery. And this is our EMF or our maximum potential supplied by the battery. I is our current, and obviously the current through the battery. And then small r, and it's important this is small r, that's the internal resistance. So that's how much resistance is just built into the battery itself. We don't obviously add resistors into the insides of batteries, but they just naturally have a certain amount of resistance that we can't avoid. So um, note that if you take I times R, remember I uh, current times resistance, well, a current times a resistance represents a voltage. So you could ask yourself, what does I times R represent? And since it's the current through the battery times the internal resistance of the battery, then this basically represents the internal voltage drop. And you can think of that as the amount of voltage that is needed just for the current to push its way out of the battery. How much voltage is going to cost you just to be able to escape from the battery? Okay. And note that if the battery is not connected to a circuit, look what happens to our formula here. If it's not connected to a circuit, our current drops to zero, and so zero times the resistance is zero. And in that case, our terminal voltage will equal the EMF. And that's only when there's, when there's no current flowing. OK, so let's draw a little picture of this. So let's draw a little diagram where we've got some external resistance, uh, which we'll call capital R, and an internal resistance, small r, and an EMF, epsilon. 
So if I have some battery that provides a certain amount of EMF, we know that any battery is not perfect. And so it's going to be automatically connected to some small amount of resistance, which we're going to call little r. <clears throat> now we can connect this battery like we would in any circuit. We can connect it to some external resistor and bring it back to our battery like that. To show that this um, to show that this resistor is really built into the battery and really can't be avoided, we sometimes just draw a set of dotted lines surrounding the terminals and the internal resistance. And note that if I was to measure the voltage, say by placing a voltmeter here, this voltmeter would be measuring my terminal voltage. And of course, it's only going to measure the voltage that actually escapes uh, from the battery. Now, when batteries go dead, it's not actually because they run out of power, typically. What ends up happening is the internal resistance inside here will slowly build over time. And eventually, if the internal resistance is too great, then you can't actually get enough useful energy or enough voltage out of the battery to put it to work. So when a battery goes dead, it is because the internal resistance... becomes too great. Okay, so just hit pause there for a second on your video uh, and uh, go ahead and try this first example right here and then you can unpause and see how you did. Okay, so I'm sure you definitely paused the video and didn't just let it keep playing. So we've got a 12 volt battery and an internal resistance of 0.22 ohms. What's the terminal voltage of the battery when three amps flow through it? So our formula, terminal voltage is equal to EMF minus current times internal resistance. And solving by plugging in our variables, we get 12 volts minus 3 amps times 0. Point, oops, sorry, 0. 0.22 times 0. 0.22 ohms. And this gives us approximately 11.3 volts of terminal voltage that's actually going to escape. Now, there's one other application of thinking about terminal voltage. And that's actually in the case of what happens when we want to recharge a battery. So imagine uh, whether it's the rechargeable battery in your phone or in your car or whatever it is. When we want to force electrons to go back into that battery to, uh, to rebuild its charge. Well, when we do this, we're going to have to apply an external voltage. We're going to have to come along and plug this um, battery into some outside power source. And when we do that, we need to apply in a voltage that is greater than the EMF because otherwise you won't be able to force electrons to go back into that battery. So in order to force electrons back in, the external voltage must be greater than the EMF. And so in this case, to calculate the terminal voltage, we could say that the terminal voltage when you're charging must be equal to the EMF plus the current times the internal resistance, which is to say the voltage you apply has to beat the EMF, and in addition to that, force the current through the internal resistor. Okay, again, just go ahead and hit pause and try this example and then unpause and see how you did. Okay, welcome back. So we're charging a car battery and it's being charged by an alternator that can supply 15 volts of external voltage. The internal resistance of the battery is 1.3 ohms. What is the current through that battery? Okay, so our formula is terminal voltage equals EMF plus I times R. Solving for I, we get I equals terminal voltage minus the EMF divided by the internal resistance. So 15 volts minus 12 divided by 1.3 ohms. And this works out to be somewhere around 2.3 amps. All right, that's it for the last set of notes. You're done.